malicious applications which use the internet um, are only one part of the whole mobile malware segment. And uh, the reasons of the internetized mobile malware appearance, uh, the classification of such malware, new technologies used uh, by this, and a small look to the close and to the distant future will be described in this presentation. But first of all, I would like to start with the history. And the third one was Backdoor, named Brother. Uh, it is very small. Uh, Trojan uh, for a pocket PC. Uh, it was created by a Ukrainian hacker in August 2004, and it had very small size, really small, but rich functionality. Uh, after the infection of the smartphone, uh, he was trying, it was trying to write itself into a startup folder with the name svchost.exe. And uh, Brother became the first example of the internetized mobile malware. But after three years, um, after Brother, there were no examples of the mobile malware which uses internet. But situation has changed in 2008. If we merge uh, all the smartphone platforms, we will see that 55% goes to all the smartphone OSs and 45% to Java. And among these 55%, uh, between June 2009 and uh, till the current moment, 35% of all new discovered smartphone malware used internet for its work. According to Gartner research, you can see that in all the regions, uh, for two years, the number of smartphones is continue to grow. And uh, people want always to be online. They want, for example, to use Facebook, to use Twitter, to go online banking via smartphones. And uh, uh, also, according to Gartner, the smartphone will remain a fast-growing segment, and the number of smartphones will still continue to grow. Cyber criminals, they will gain new opportunities for earning money illegally. And it means that different types of mobile malware, they started to use internet uh, to accomplish these aims. What are these ways? Or maybe it's better to say technologies used by mobile malware. Uh, mainly there are four of them. These are file downloads, proto server side polymorphism, uh, malware which establishing internet connection and URL redirection. Let's describe all these four technologies uh, more attentively. In 2008, a uh, worm named Infojack for in Windows mobile devices appeared and it infected thousands of smartphones. Uh, it was trying to collect the data about the installed applications on the smartphone and upload it to a web server of a cyber criminal. And after some time, it was trying to download a file named msservice2.zip. After the successful download of this file, it will try to extract it into Windows folder and execute it. The another example is a worm for Symbian devices named Ixi. It's a signed mobile malware. Uh, it also infected thousands of smartphones and it was trying to collect the data about the phone like phone number, phone model, something else, and upload it to the web server. And this worm was trying to download SMS text template. Why these two worms are called worms? First one was trying to spread via memory cards, and this one was trying to spread via SMS. SMS, you cannot attach any kind of file to the SMS, so that's why Ixi was trying to scan the contact book of the infected device, gain all the numbers and send an SMS with the text like, oh, here are my new pictures and the link. If user receive this message uh, and click the links, he will be, the worm will be downloaded to the, to the smartphone and user will execute it and will be infected. So Ixi was downloading the template of such messages to the smartphone. And for example, now I would like to move to very interesting technology named like proto server side polymorphism. And the good example is an SMS Trojan for Windows mobile devices named Saywick. This Trojan is trying to download encrypted XML file. So the information between tags phone and interval are encrypted. Inside this Trojan, we can find a special decryption table in the code of the Trojan. And if we decrypt it, so put, uh, except these three letters, the numbers, we will receive an SMS number and SMS interval. So this Trojan will download an encrypted file and decrypt it and try, continue, started to send messages to this premium red number with this text and 
it will continue for 22 seconds, every 22 seconds. And one message to this premium red number will cost for use about $5. So imagine the situation, how, how much money user will lose after the if he will be infected with the, this Trojan. I think it's pretty big sum of money. Uh, one more example of an SMS Trojan, also, by the way, signed, <laughs> signed malware, uh, can explain the another technology named uh, establishing internet connection. Uh, after the infection of the smartphone, this Trojan will try to look for the internet actively. So he will uh, call this function. This function helps the Trojan to receive uh, the list of all internet connection stored on the smartphone, like GPRS connection, like edge connection. And after calling next function, this Trojan will try to connect with the help of the first internet access point. If he's if he won't successful, if it won't success, uh, he will try to take another one and to connect with the help of the another one. And finally, if uh, he will give success, uh, he will simply download uh, an SMS number and SMS text from a special site. And one more point is that it works absolutely silent, so you won't notice anything. You will see just uh, after, after some time when you will receive a phone bill. You will see that you lost a lot of money for the internet, for some strange SMS, to premium rate numbers, and you will understand that something gone wrong. To one of the most interesting examples of the mobile malware which uses internet, this is the worm for the iPhone ISS. Uh, this worm infects only jailbroken iPhones, and uh, the point is that if you jailbroke it, your iPhone, you will you should install an SSH client. And this, all the SSH clients for the iPhones, they have a default password named Alpine. And uh, more than 90% of the users, they don't even know that there is an SSH client on the smartphone and it has a default password. And the worm is using this uh, so-called vulnerability in order to spread itself. After the infection, it will change it to uh, another password. I won't mention it because it's a bit uncensored. And uh, this worm is able to receive shell comments from a web server. So after the infection of the iPhone, it will try to connect to the web server and he will be able to receive different types of shell comments. And after some time, it will receive a shell comment which looks like this. So it means that uh, to the host file will be written the following information. And this site, uh, uh, this URL, is, um, goes to a special, uh, is, to the one of the Dutch banks. So if a user of a Dutch bank has a jailbroken iPhone and he was infected, and he's trying to go to this link with the help of the iPhone, he will be redirected to the phishing page and uh, probably will type its, uh, his credentials and the money will go away to the cyber criminal. The mobile botnet with a centralized common center. And uh, let's talk more attentively about mobile botnets. Uh, imagine we have a smartphone, we have a personal computer. Can we put an equal sign between them today, right now? Yeah, we can do it. So it means that mobile botnets will have almost the same functionality as a simple PC botnets. They will be able to send spam, SMS spam, MMS spam, or maybe even Bluetooth spam. They will be able to massively steal passwords from the infected devices. And maybe they will be able to provide telephone DDoS attacks. Mobile botnets just will become one more commercial offer on the cyber criminal market.